Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Saturday, February 4th, 2023. As you can probably tell, I'm battling a little bit of a cold right now, so bear with me with my nasally voice. But if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $15 Bank Shop best bet, you can find that at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Saturday's loaded card in college hoops. First up, let's go to the SEC as Florida takes on Kentucky. This one, 8.30 Eastern, is going to be on ESPN. Now, right here on the Bank Shop Breakdown, we took the Florida Gators plus the points against Tennessee last time out. I said it wouldn't be completely shocked if the Gators pulled off the outright upset, and they won that game by double digits, a big win for the Gators. Now they're right back into the bubble conversation for the NCAA tournament, but this is a dreadful spot for Florida, and this one, I'm fading the Gators out of Kentucky laying the points. You know, Florida's coming off a big upset, emotional win at home. I don't know if you saw the celebrations from the Gators in the locker room after that one, but you know, it was great to see, and you know, it's, it's a great win for the program, but now you have to go on the road after that emotional victory. You only have a couple days off. You have to play a very tough Kentucky team with a very, very good home court advantage at Rupp Arena. And Kentucky, I think, matches up really well with Florida, especially when you look at the Gators. They struggle quite a bit in terms of defending the uh, defensive glass. They give up a lot of offensive rebounds, 18 to Tennessee in that game. And although Tennessee had a poor shooting night, which was the big reason why they lost that game, you know, Kentucky, they're fifth in the country in offensive rebounding. They got one of the best offensive rebounders in the nation in Oscar Sheepway. If you're giving those 15-plus offensive rebounds to Kentucky on their home court, uh, I think you're in trouble, especially because Kentucky's 48th in the country in three-point shooting. A pretty good shooting team that takes care of the basketball, gets after those offensive rebounds. Just a really bad spot, a letdown spot for Florida after their big win. A tough matchup on the road. I like Kentucky to win this one going away, so give me the Wildcats laying the points. Next up, we'll go to the Big 12 as TCU takes on Oklahoma State. This one, 2 o'clock Eastern on Big 12 Network. Now, Oklahoma State has won four of its last five games. Two of those wins over its big rivals in Oklahoma, the Sooners. One of those wins, a nice upset victory over Iowa State. But then the other one, a win over Ole Miss at home. Nothing nothing too crazy there. A team outside the top 100 in Ken Palm. This is a really tough game here for Oklahoma State. And although I like what I'm seeing from them defensively, they're seventh in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency. I don't think they have enough offensively in this game to compete. And I know they're going to have a very good home crowd. Really, any time a team's playing at home in the Big 12, it's going to be a nice home court advantage for that team. But TCU, even without Mike Miles, is still a team I'm watching out for in the Big 12. I think they're a top 10 team in the country, in my opinion, even without Mike Miles. And we saw last time out, they beat West Virginia by four points, despite only shooting 20% from three. Two of 10 TCU was from long range in that game. I think TCU is better on both sides of the ball, but especially on the offensive end. They're a great offensive rebounding team. It takes care of the basketball. And the one big worry I have for Oklahoma State offensively, this team turns the ball over far too much. 314th in the country in offensive turnover percentage. TCU loves forcing those turnovers 19th in the country in turnover percentage on defense i think this is going to be a really tough matchup for the cowboys give me tcu next up we go to the acc at syracuse takes on boston college this one's going to be five o'clock eastern on acc network now we took syracuse against boston college the first meeting between these two back on december 31st syracuse won that game by 14 points at the carrier dome and even though they're on the road here and i much rather take the orange when they're playing at home i still like syracuse's chances to grab another win and another cover in this spot you know boston college coming off a nice upset victory over a ranked clemson team could be considered a little bit of a letdown spot but just when you look at the numbers you know syracuse's two three zone forces you to take a lot of tough three-point jumpers and Boston College is ranked 343rd in the country in three-point shooting. They also struggle to defend the perimeter, which is not great against the Syracuse team that takes a lot of three-pointers and makes them at a pretty good rate, 51st in the country in three-point shooting. I also don't love the fact that Boston College is not a very good offensive rebounding team. Because of that 2-3 zone, Syracuse is going to give up those defense, the offensive rebounds on the defensive end. They're ranked 337th in defensive rebounding percentage, but BC just not really the type of team to take advantage of that. So I don't think Boston College is off offense is good enough, nor is it really designed to play at this Syracuse 2-3 zone. So I'm going to take Syracuse and lay the points as they snap their three-game losing streak. Next up, one of the games that I'm really excited for on Saturday's card, it's going to be Gonzaga and St. Mary's. This one, 1030 Eastern on ESPN. This is always a fun matchup to watch, but especially at St. Mary's because that home court advantage they get when Gonzaga comes to town, it is unreal. We saw it last year when Gonzaga looked like they were untouchable in the West Coast Conference, really in the country, and then St. Mary's upset them right before the conference tournament, 67-57, of beat by double digits going into the conference tournament. And St. Mary's this year is even better than last year's team. I think they're honestly 
better than Gonzaga this year, and I like the Gales to win this game, and I'm going to lay the points with them. You know, on a big-time win streak, they're 9-0 and in conference play, looking great along the way. You look at the fundamentals. I mean, this team does not turn the ball over. They're a great offensive rebounding team. They're a great three-point shooting team. On the defensive end, they're uh, fourth in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency. No surprise there. With this Randy Bennett teams are always really good defensively. They're a great defensive rebounding team, which is really important against that Gonzaga offense. And I think St. Mary's with being the home team here, I think they have a great shot at winning this game pretty comfortably. You know, Gonzaga's looked beatable this season, a lot more so this year than we're used to seeing. And defensively, you know, this team's going to give up some points. They're ranked 78th in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency. They, they struggle to defend the perimeter. And I do think St. Mary's, even though this is not a team that looks to run the court, they're a very slow-paced team. 359th in the country in average possession length on offense. I still think they score plenty enough in this game to cover the numbers. So give me St. Mary's in this game as they take down their big rivals. And the final game we're going to talk about for Saturday's card in college basketball. It's going to be in the WAC as Tarleton hosts UT Rio Grande Valley. This one, 5 o'clock Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Now, Tarleton is 17th in the country in turnover percentage on defense. Similar to a lot of teams in the WAC this year, they're very aggressive defensively. So, sure, they're going to take plenty of fouls, and UT Rio Grande Valley should have 20-plus free throw attempts in this game. But they're also going to force a lot of turnovers, and that should end with a lot of fast-break buckets on the other end for a Tarleton offense that's so-so this season. And on the other side, you know, UT Rio Grande Valley has not played very well on the road. Their last three road games against UT Arlington, Sam Houston State, and Stephen F. Austin all resulted in uh, double-digit losses and games in which they gave up 80-plus points. So I just can't trust UT Rio Grande Valley in this game against Tarleton. Pretty home court, pretty good home court advantage as well. We're used to seeing from Tarleton in their conference games. So give me Tarleton. I'm going to lay the points. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.